I scared you. No, you didn't. Where'd you get this thing? My dad threw it out. Finders keepers. Aww. Tate Langdon might be one of the most horrific characters we've ever met over the course of American Horror Story's eight season run. And there's been a whole bunch. <laughs> At first glance, he seemed like a troubled teenager, but we soon found out that he was a mentally unstable psychiatric patient with an extremely violent past. We met him on Murder House, but he's made a return on American Horror Story Apocalypse. Let's spend the next few minutes recapping everything we know about American Horror Story's Tate Langdon. Before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of our American Horror Story videos, including our weekly breakdowns. Also, if you subscribe, you'll get to see a whole lot of this. All this dude is Tate Langdon is played by the great Evan Peters, who's appeared in every single season of American Horror Story. Evan, we will never get sick of you. As I mentioned, we first met Tate in season one's Murder House. He's the son of Constance and Hugo Langdon, and the brother of Adelaide, Beauregard, and Rose, whom we just recently met in the Return to Murder House episode of Apocalypse. My family calls. Now, you probably already know that Constance killed Hugo after catching him forcing himself on Moira. And Tate, as well as the other siblings, were never told the whole truth. They believed that their father had abandoned them at a young age. Tate's tormented youth and severe mental illness all came to a head in the early 90s. At this point, Constance had started seeing Larry Harvey, and the family found themselves back in the murder house. When Child Protective Services was going to take Bo away for her child neglect and inhumane treatment of him, she instead persuaded Larry to smother him with a pillow. Now, if you really want to hear how bad of a mother Constance was to her children, check out our video on everything we know about Constance Langdon live on the channel right now. Unsurprisingly, Constance tried her best to cover up the fact that she had Bo killed. She explained that he had died of natural causes, but Tate knows the truth. Stop, Daddy! You're a smart girl! You know he killed our brother! Stop it! So Tate reached his breaking point. First, he attacked Larry, pouring gasoline on him and lighting him on fire. That's the reason for all those burn scars. And then he committed a mass shooting at Westfield High, which took the lives of 15 innocent students. Tate returned home to a bedroom full of SWAT team members, and he was subsequently killed as his mother pleaded for his life. Of course, that now meant that Tate would reside in the murder house for years to come, and he would continue to kill and torment innocent people in the afterlife. Season 1 follows the story of the most recent family to move into the murder house, the Harmons, Ben, Vivian, and Violet. As it turns out, Ben takes on Tate as a patient to help him with his severe psychological issues. He talks in detail about killing people and not having any remorse, much like we see from him on his murder spree. Ben tries his best to help Tate, but he's kind of a lost cause. I feel like I'm helping to take them away from the shit and the piss and the vomit that run in the streets. I'm helping to take them somewhere clean and kind. Tate soon meets Ben's daughter, Violet, in her bathroom as she's attempting to cut her wrist over the sink. He tries to give her some advice on what she's doing and how to properly commit suicide. Obviously, they're both extremely damaged and troubled young teenagers. They bond over their similar pain, struggles, experiences, and dysfunctional families. Except, remember, Tate's a ghost. Tate soon takes her on a date. But how do you go on a date when you're stuck in the murder house? You wait for Halloween, the one night when the spirits can leave the house and roam freely. During their romantic night at the beach, the pair is confronted by some other wandering spirits, the high school kids that Tate murdered years ago. They obviously want answers from Tate, and he plays it off like he has no idea what they're talking about. He doesn't want to blow his cover while on his date. But soon, Violet decides to do some googling of her own, and she comes to the shocking revelation that Tate was the one behind the Westfield High Massacre. Not only that, her boyfriend is a damn ghost, as he was killed in the very same bedroom in 1994. She's obviously extremely distraught over all of this. She's a total mess and attempts to commit suicide again, this time by taking a bunch of sleeping pills. Tate finds her body and tries to resuscitate her. Unfortunately, he's too late, as Violet dies in Tate's arms and returns to the house as a ghost. But she's still unaware of her own death. Tate decides to hide her body in a crawl space of the murder house so that Violet won't realize what's happened. One question, what the hell are Violet's parents up to this whole time? It's only a matter of time before Violet finds out what she's done. 
She tries to leave the house numerous times, but can't. Finally, Tate shows her her corpse that he's hidden, proving that she had committed suicide. Again, she's overcome with grief and sadness. <laughs> now, Tate and Violet aren't the only spirits in the house. The Montgomerys are also there, Charles and Nora. And Nora wants a baby because, well, her baby looks like this. Tate promises her that he will get her a baby, and his plan is to trick Vivian into conceiving a child. Tate was already a reprehensible human and ghost, and this is even more evil. He puts on that infamous rubber suit and rapes and impregnates Vivian, who thought she was having sex with her husband Ben. This results in twins, one who passes away after childbirth, and the Alpha, Michael Langdon, whose birth kills Vivian. Yes, that's the Antichrist. After falling in love with Violet, Tate tells Nora that the baby isn't hers. He can't keep his end of the deal, which doesn't go over nicely with her. Another spirit in the house, Chad, then tells Violet what Tate has done. Violet loves Tate, but claims she will never be able to forgive him. Season 1 wraps up with Tate in the doghouse, well, on the outside looking in, as the Harmons are one big, happy, but extremely dead, family celebrating Christmas together, while Hayden and Tate are left in the cold. But you have to give it to Tate, the guy is extremely persistent. I'll wait. Forever if I have to. This isn't the last we see of Tate Langdon. In Apocalypse's return to Murder House, we see that Tate is still in the doghouse when it comes to Violet. She hasn't spoken to him since she found out what he did during the events of Murder House. We also get a glimpse of what happened when his son Michael Langdon was young. While Ben took Michael under his wing as both a doctor and a parental figure, Tate was extremely aggressive with Michael, saying that he could never be the father of something so evil. The Tate Langdon redemption story continued as we found out it was the house itself that birthed the Antichrist, that something so evil could not have been created by Tate and Vivian. The house is in fact a sort of portal into hell. After Madison Montgomery finds out the, quote, truth from Constance and the Harmons, she motivates Violet to give Tate a second chance. Let's be honest though, she basically just wiped Violet's memory. Regular water, tap water. So Violet forgives Tate for everything he's ever done, like this felony assault, attempted murder, those 15 murders at school, all those other murders, oh, and not to mention raping her own damn mother. Turns out he actually saved Vivian's life when Michael tried to kill her, so he's not such a bad guy after all. Well, he's still a bad guy, just not Michael Langdon bad. So Tate and Violet can live happily ever after, but only in the murder house, and only until the apocalypse comes. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know which other characters you'd like to see deep dives on. Also, hit us up with any theories and predictions for the coming apocalypse. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you soon.